people were fleeing. They were panicking. The gunfire was sporadic. It would stop and then more shots, then a lull and then more shots. I could hear people yelling at them to shut off the lights, to be quiet. Las Vegas is famous for its bright lights, busy casinos, and lively atmosphere. But in 2017, it became famous for a different reason. A 64-year-old man from Mesquite, Nevada, planned and carried out the murders of about 60 people. Stephen Paddock did not have a good start in life. His father, Benjamin Paddock, was a bank robber who was caught in 1960 and was rarely around. Stephen was only seven years old at the time. He later got away from jail in 1969 and ended up on the FBI's most wanted list. One of Stephen's ex-wives says that in a police interview, he talked about how hard it was to grow up with a single mother and how hard it was for the family to make ends meet which may have affected his focus on being self-sufficient. In the late 1980s, Stephen quit his job to start a real estate business with his brother, Eric. From the 1970s to the early 2000s, he lived in the greater Los Angeles area and owned properties in Panorama City, Cerritos, and North Hollywood. Stephen's family said that he was worth at least $2 million when he sold the real estate business. He also had investments that were making him money. For example, he bought an apartment building in 2004 that was making him over $500,000 a year by 2011. IRS records showed that he made between five and six million dollars from selling it in 2015. Even though Steven's finances seemed to be in good shape, he had a problem. He gambled a lot. He loved gambling and had been playing video poker for over 25 years. It wasn't clear how much he made, but he wasn't known among high-stakes players in Las Vegas, and the casinos didn't see him as a whale or high roller. Steven liked to play video poker, and he usually played at night to stay out of the sun. In the months before the killing, he was said to often smell like alcohol first thing in the morning and look sad. In 2013, 2016, and again in June 2017, he made prescriptions for Valium, a drug used to treat anxiety. In an interview with Class TV, a local CBS station, Clark County Sheriff Joe Lombardo said that Stephen had been apparently losing a lot of money since September 2015, which caused him depression. His girlfriend said that Stephen, who was loving at the start of their relationship, became less affectionate and close to her. She thought it was because his health was getting worse. Stephen knew a lot about gun rules and was very strong in his support of the Second Amendment. Between October 2016 and September the 28th, 2017, he bought a lot of guns. He bought over 55 guns, mostly rifles, and a lot of tools for them. Before that, he bought about 29 guns, mostly handguns and shotguns, between 1982 and September 2016. His lover noticed that he was buying more gun-related things, but she thought it was just a hobby. Two weeks before the attack, he told his girlfriend she should visit her home country of the Philippines and gave her a surprise plane ticket and $100,000 to buy a house there. During this time, they mostly talked to each other through email and text messages. Stephen was spotted in Las Vegas with a woman who was thought to be a sex worker. When they stayed at the Mandalay Bay a month before the shooting, his lover says he often looked out at Las Vegas Village from different windows in their room. Some people also think he might have thought about attacking past events because he had been looking into big venues in places like Boston since at least May 2017 and had reserved a room with a view of the Lollapalooza Festival in Chicago in August 2017 but did not use it. From September 17th to September 24th, Stevens stayed at the Ogden in downtown Las Vegas. From his room, he could see the Life is Beautiful event, which took place outside from September 22nd to 24th. In the middle of September, he searched the internet for things like SWAT guns and ballistics charts, 308 SWAT, Las Vegas, and do the cops use bombs? 
He checked into Mandalay Bay on September 25th, 2017, and made a reservation for room 32 to 135. After four days, he also checked into room 32 to 134, which is right next door. Both suites had a view of where the show was going to be held in Las Vegas Village. He spent most of his time gambling during the nights of his stay at the hotel. He made several trips to his mesquite house according to cell phone records. He moved seven suitcases to his room on September the 27th, two more on September the 28th, six more on September the 30th, and two more on October the 1st, all with the assistance of hotel porters. He had 14 AR-15 rifles, 8 AR-10 type rifles, a bolt-action rifle, a revolver, and other weapons along with related gear and ammo. The Do Not Disturb signs were put on the doors of both rooms on September the 30th. The third and last night of the festival, October the 1st, 2017, witnessed the mass shootings take place between 10.05 and 10.15 p.m. The security guard Jesus Campos was sent to the 32nd floor of the hotel just before 10 p.m. in order to look into an open door alert. One door led directly to the floor and he tried to open it, but it would not budge. The L-shaped bracket that was later found fitted into the door and door frame to prevent the door from opening was the cause of the barrier. After notifying his dispatch center of the incident, he proceeded to look into the sound he described as rapid drilling coming from room 32-135. About 35 shots were fired through Steven's apartment and one of them struck him in the right thigh at 10.05 p.m. At that time, I heard what I assumed were drilling sounds and I believed that they were in the area working somehow. He immediately reported being shot to the hotel via radio and cell phone, hiding out in the cubicle between rooms 32-122 and 32-124. At 10 minutes to 5 in the evening, Stephen broke two of the windows in his two apartments with a hammer and started shooting through them. About yards into the festival audience, he fired more than a thousand rifle shots. When the gunshots first started, many in the crowd thought it was fireworks. They were brief intervals in the shooting, but it ceased around 10.15 p.m. after more than 10 minutes. People were cowering. They were very fearful for their lives. A woman tripped right in front of me. A man shielded a woman with his body before I saw them both get up and run away. A man in a wheelchair was helped to an exit. I was trying to capture anything that was moving and that had good lighting. That was critical. It was so dark and there was limited lighting. It was really hard to get a sense of what was happening. Photographer David Becker was covering the music festival. A huge jet fuel tank at McCarran International Airport was 2,000 feet away from where Stephen fired eight rounds in addition to the concert goers. Of those, one bullet entered the tank and two struck its exterior. Mostly composed of kerosene, which fortunately did not blow up, as it is unlikely to catch fire when struck by a bullet. Cops were confused as to where the gunfire was coming from throughout the shooting. Then, they noticed many bursts from the center of Mandalay Bay's northern side and ran to the hotel. The injured security guards led authorities to Stephen's room and assisted others in evacuating as they arrived on the 32nd floor at 10.17 p.m. On the 32nd floor, eight more officers showed up there between 10.26 and 10.30 p.m. The gunshots had subsided and the police proceeded along the hallway using a master key that Campos had given them to inspect and empty each room. The officers completed removing the guests around 10.55 p.m. when authorities used explosives to break into room 32.135. At 10.20 p.m., they discovered Stephen dead on the floor from a self-inflicted gunshot wound to the head. Not counting Stephen's death, there were 60 verified deaths as of October 2020. There were 58 victims, 36 women, and 22 males among the immediate dead. All of them had gunshot wounds. 
Of the casualties, 31 were pronounced dead at the scene, 27 passed away in the hospital, and the final victim passed away on October the 3rd, two days later. There were about 867 injured victims, at least 413 of whom had shrapnel or gunshot wounds. On November the 15th, 2019, a woman from California, age 57, who had been paralyzed in the shooting, passed away. The gunshot was the cause of her death. Even though the tragedy turned out to be the bloodiest mass shooting in US history carried out by a single person, it also resulted in some positive actions. Block-long blood donation queues formed in Las Vegas the morning following the incident. 800 units of blood were donated to the local blood bank in Las Vegas alone. A 53% increase in blood donations was also reported by the American Red Cross in the two days that followed the incident. To support the victims and their families, millions of dollars have been raised.